Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite girl, Bo Vintage, and today's video is <laughs> Love and Hip Hop episode. I don't know what because the episode happened on Monday, yeah, and it is now Saturday and I'm officially recording. Dime trying to cool down um, Carly Red because Carly Red was upset with the whole Jocelyn situation. Carly Red had stormed out and went to do an extra thing, and so they, her and Melissa, were both outside of the room trying to cool down Carly and convince her to come back inside and try this shit all over again. So at this point, Carly Red is crying her eyes out. She's hysterical. And she is saying how she's always been a good friend to Jocelyn and Jocelyn doesn't see her like that and blah, 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 blah. And so Carly Red is really, really, really emotional over the fact that her and Jocelyn are not on good terms. The only thing that Carly really wants from Jocelyn at this point is respect. She feels as though Jocelyn doesn't respect her at all and she feels as though she's respectful towards Jocelyn, so Jocelyn should just do the same for her. So Jocelyn says that Carly Red's extra, which is not a lie. Carly Red is very extra. Nonetheless, they regroup and start over. And so I believe Jocelyn broke the ice and apologized. Jocelyn actually ended up complimenting Carly, told her she looked really nice today, and then she proceeded to apologize for everything that's transpired. If she had started this originally, then we would never have gotten to the point that we were at where we had to start over but she decided to come at Carly sideways out the gate and then Carly came at her and it was just a big mess so Jocelyn put on her big girl panties apologized to Carly and called it a day Carly tries to explain to Jocelyn that she is not coming from a negative place she tries to explain that she doesn't consider herself messy but realistically she's messy like there's no denying the fact that Carly Red is messy it is what it is like she's she's just messy and so Carly Red in her mind doesn't see it as that but that's exactly what she is what is so then Jocelyn proceeds to tell Carly Red that she needs to not tell her anything about her baby daddy because she doesn't care she's like if he's out in these streets F in this biatch and F in that biatch it doesn't matter that's not I don't care like let him do him you don't need to tell me that and so they basically get a mutual understanding Basically, Jocelyn just doesn't care and she doesn't want to hear anything that Carly has to say whether it's about this person, the next person, or her baby daddy. Like, she just doesn't care. So, in my last episode, I, um, said this and I was so happy to find out that I was right because I'm always right, okay? Jocelyn actually had nothing in that envelope when she was trying to blackmail Carly. She had nothing in the envelope. She literally just was fooling around to make Carly Red think that she had something when she didn't to piss her off and it worked so um yay for me because I was right okay so once she actually tells Carly this they laugh they kiss they make up and that was the end of the scene so in this next scene Kirk and Stevie meet up and to me I don't feel like they have like a real relationship outside of love and hip-hop I don't know because I don't know them too but um this meeting was just awkward to me. Either way, the meeting was basically revolving around Stevie telling Kirk that he needs to go and do the paternity test because the longer he waits to do it, the more people are going to think that it's his. Basically exactly what um, Scrappy was telling him. Like, I don't, nobody gets the purpose of him not doing the test. In this scene, Kirk actually denied the fact that the baby is his yet again he said he doesn't need to take the test because he knows it's not his baby blah 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 and um he actually said the reason that he didn't show up to the party was because he just had a feeling that it would not be going it, it was not going to be a good party for him to be at because stevie did actually tell him about miss shirlene and mama d on stage with the dna test thing so Tammy, Rashida, and Mimi go out to have like a lunch I guess and they actually invited the Panamanian goddess which her name is Estelita. I saw a picture of her and CB on Instagram today or yesterday and the picture was very like, they look like a couple. They don't look like business partners. So I don't know what the story is but whatever. Stevie is always ending up putting his little beefcake in these people. So in the people that he works with. So I don't know. Of course as always Mimi was throwing mad shade to Jocelyn in her confessional. That is not news. Um, <laughs> 
she was basically like bigging up Estelita and knocking Jocelyn down. Estelita actually said that Stevie claims that he has no or he's not working with any other Latin artists at the moment and I guess the girls were kind of trying to tell her like they're not sure about that because Jocelyn is definitely still a part of the label so she needs to definitely check in with that. She actually ends up spilling tea to Mimi that Jocelyn was over at over at Stevie's house, but like they never crossed paths, which I found weird. I'm like, how big is this man's house? If y'all ain't never crossed paths, but you guys are in the same house. Like he ain't Drake. Like what? I actually found her to be a little messy because it's just like, this is your first time meeting Mimi. Why are you telling her stuff about her baby daddy and Jocelyn? At the end of the day, Jocelyn and Stevie are the ones that are married. So whatever's going on in Stevie's home, even though there are problems between Mimi and Jocelyn, is none of Mimi's business if Jocelyn is over at Stevie's house as long as Eva's not there. Mimi, of course, finds this interesting because the last time she spoke to Stevie, he said that they're in a bad place and that they don't really speak like that. So for her to be over at his house is kind of a big deal. So they do start to kiki a little bit and then Mimi ends up giving... Estelita her fair warning about Jocelyn and just give it telling her like you better be careful because she's crazy. She was trying to explain to her that Jocelyn has a habit of ruining Stevie's business affairs whatever they may be. If it's not going to benefit Jocelyn she ain't here for it so she was basically telling her to make sure she keeps Stevie in check. She also See, in this episode, I was just like, Mimi, what are you doing? She also ended up giving Estelita her number. Mimi gives Estelita her number and is basically like, if you ever need to talk, just call me kind of thing. I was like, this is weird. Like, Mimi's like overstepping at this point. I didn't feel like it was necessary. Maybe she wants to build a friendship with her, but it's just like, why? Like, you do not need to build a friendship with everybody that comes in contact with your baby daddy or Jocelyn. It's not necessary. So Tammy ends up bringing up her swimsuit line and talking about how she wants to go on a trip to Jamaica. I said, oh, Mona really cutting the check. Mona is really cutting the check this season because, of course, New York was the first Love & Hip Hop cast to actually get to go on vacay. And so now the Jamaica cast, I mean, the Jamaica cast, lot. The, um, now the Atlanta cast is going on vacay as well. So that's super exciting. They get to go film in another place for once instead of just Atlanta. And the thing I found hilarious about this scene was right when Tammy started talking about Jamaica, all of a sudden there was like some reggae type beat, Calypso beat playing in the background. I was like, unnecessary okay unnecessary vh1 you didn't have to do all that like i was just so annoyed i'm like you guys are not for real like stop <laughs> so then tammy actually brings up melissa and she asks mimi about the situation her and rashida are interested to know exactly what went down and so of course mimi's still talking in circles regarding this situation like just say what happened like i don't know why mimi's being so secretive we know like we're not dumb we already figured it out so i don't know why she is trying to like um protect that like we we are not stupid okay Mimi so there's no need to lie and deny because it's clear that's all you're good for at this point just say you guys did the damn thing and that was that like she literally tried to like downplay the relationship I was so annoyed you guys I was so pissed <laughs> and so of course because Melissa is going to be at the swimsuit fitting Mimi decides she's not gonna go and I'm just like, it's not about Melissa though, it's about Tammy. Like, just go. But she's saying, hell no. However, she said there's no way in hell she will miss Jamaica because Melissa's going to be there. So why can't you just go to the swimsuit fitting as well? You're going to have to see her anyway. Like, Atlanta's pretty small, I hear. So so in this next scene, we learn that Miss Jessica Dime has a boo. His name is Sean. He is a basketball player, I believe. However, I don't know if he still plays, if he's retired, child. I don't know who this man is. I ain't never seen him a day in my life. But they are booed up. They've known each other for years. And now they're actually official. And so he, I guess, has a spot on the show. I don't really know. But um, he's not bad looking. He's pretty handsome. And... They seem to be like best friends first, so that's good. In this scene, they actually are sitting on like I think a park bench or like a little swing thing. And 
he actually expresses to Dime that he's disappointed in the fact that her and Tammy have some sort of, you know, drama or beef because he is really good friends with Waka Flocka and he doesn't feel as though their ladies should be going at it with each other. Tammy actually says if she can forgive Waka, I mean forgive Waka, if she if she can forgive Jocelyn, she can probably forgive Tammy too and like at least be cordial. So next, Stevie comes over to Mimi's house and he's complimenting her and calling her a super mom and all of this and at first, I don't know, Stevie has like this thing like he just talks sexually like I don't even know how to explain it like he just the way he talks is a little creepy to me sometimes I don't know but that's just Stevie so we just let it be but <laughs> when he was talking to Mimi I kind of felt awkward like I felt like I shouldn't be seeing it <laughs> I don't know how to explain it so then Mimi quickly changed the subject and says that she actually ran into his new artist the Panamanian goddess aka Estelita or is it Estelita aka Panamanian goddess doesn't matter Mimi tells him that he needs to make sure he keeps it business with her in my opinion I don't think it's any of Mimi's business if Stevie wants to go stick his beefcake in something he can but I agree with her where I don't think he should be doing that however it's none of her business at the end of the day like she doesn't she's not his mom like you don't need to tell him to keep it business like mind your business so Mimi actually snitches now and tells Stevie that Estelita said that Jocelyn been over to his house and blah 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 and I was like oh no baby like don't be getting Estelita in no trouble with her with her with her manager now like that's not cool I believe she told him that Estelita is saying that he's playing house with Jocelyn again and he actually denies this he says no that's not the case so at this point now it's time for Stevie to actually tell Eva that she has a little sister and kids on camera are just awkward so this scene was just awkward. Eva wanted to just make sure that he, she was still his baby and he said she'll always be the baby and blah blah blah. So Eva's happy and excited that she has a little sister. So <laughs> to end the scene I was freaking dying. Stevie had put his Gucci hat and I think his sunglasses on Eva and Eva was doing Stevie's face okay and I was like on the floor <laughs> she was doing the rat face and going like <laughs> she was doing this and I was crying you guys like actually crying it was hilarious that child looked just like her daddy ain't no denying that child child mm -mm. So in this next scene, Jocelyn is actually headed to, or she's in LA, to host The Real. And so apparently she ended up leaving the baby with Stevie. But it, there was a scene where Stevie was standing in his kitchen and he had a baby wrapped in a blanket and he was holding the baby. There was no baby in that blanket. Like you could tell when a blanket is just stuffed and when there's actually a baby in it. But then in the scene after that, there was actually the baby was with him. But like the baby was not left with this man. I don't know why they tried to like have a fake baby or not even a fake baby. Like they literally just, it looked like a little cocoon. Like they just wrapped like this little white blanket and there was no baby inside of it. I was like, love and hip hop, this is too much. Like why did you guys have to film this? It was unnecessary. Like why are you guys faking the baby when there's really a baby the, the baby exists like this is unnecessary and then for the rest of that they were just showing clips of Jocelyn on the reel so in this next scene it is the swimsuit try on with Tammy Carly meets Estelita for the first time and she keeps being very weird because of course she just made up with Jocelyn and now that she and Jocelyn had that conversation and she knows Jocelyn doesn't want to hear anything about Stevie or what Stevie has going on. She's like soaking in this information and it's killing her. <laughs> it's literally, we're literally watching Carly Red die because she knows she can't even run back to Jocelyn and be like, girl, I met Stevie, Stevie's new artist. She's a Panamanian goddess, blah, blah, blah. Like she knows she can't do that. So she's being super weird and she just keeps saying interesting, interesting. And everybody's like, why are you being rude? Like stop so after they page her on like why are you being rude and she's like i'm not being rude and they're like yeah you are like every time estelita said something she would just be like interesting like <laughs> it was actually 
so awkwardly funny. Um, but then after they paged her on that, she decided to try to slip it in there. Literally slip it in there. She's like, yeah, so I made up with Jocelyn. And everybody's like, you, huh? What? What'd you say? And so she repeated herself and she said, I made up with Jocelyn. We're good now, blah, blah, blah. So they ask her if she's told Mimi yet. Carly has not told Mimi. And this is not good. I feel like Mimi's going to be done with Carly. Because Mimi, Carly knows, like of all people, Carly knows what the situation has been. And so Mimi and Carly have been friends for years, okay? I think that because they've been friends for so many years, it's really a slap in the face to Mimi if Carly is befriending Jocelyn after all that's transpired. I don't know how I would feel in the situation just because it's just like I'm not the type of person that's like yo if I don't fuck with this person you can't either like I'm not like that but it depends on the severity of the situation you know what I mean and so you just pick and choose your battles and pick and choose your friends that's just what it is if Mimi decides she doesn't want to be friends with Carly Red anymore because she decides she wants to be friends with Jocelyn now after whatever then it is what it is at the end of the day Carly knows this she knows that that is not gonna fly with Mimi so I'm hoping that it gets addressed on Monday she invites them all to her grand opening and she tells them that she invited Jock as well but she has something up her sleeve for him which is of course Caesar being there <laughs> And I'm just like, Carly is always up to games. Like, she's always playing a damn game with people. I don't understand. So then Estelita changes the subject. And she's like how she was watching the reel earlier. And Jocelyn had a lot of stuff to say about Rashida and her personal business. And I was just like, why is Estelita coming out the woodworks with this? Like, girl, you know you wasn't watching the reel. Mona set your ass up and told you to come and tell Rashida this. That's all that is. She's like, I have the video. And that's when I knew it was all production, okay? Like, nobody has, nobody downloads the video onto their phone to show. Like, I just can't even deal. I can't. I can't. Like, because that means that she would have had to either, she would have had to have been streaming it illegally. Or she would have had to have it on her PVR. And she rewound it okay to record it to bring to Rashida like that's super messy you're new you need to relax so once Estelita shows this to Rashida Rashida's like well guess I'm not coming to the grand opening because she's just not interested she's like now all our business out there in the streets Jocelyn's out here spilling tea on the reel that is national television telling people that Kirk had a baby on Rashida I mean it was enough for Atlanta to know but now it's on a national spectrum so if I was Rashida, I would be embarrassed too, but control your mans, like, once. So, once Rashida opts out, Tammy, I think, suggests that Estelita go to the grand opening because Carly did not exactly extend an invite to her because she don't know her. And so they were telling her to go, and she's like, well, am I invited? And Carly was like how, basically saying she's not sure about that either. And so then Melissa said that that's going to be her plus one, and basically they're telling Carly, you ain't got a choice, I'm bringing her that's just what it is. While Carly was hesitating, um, Estelita was like, interesting. <laughs> I was like, yes, Estelita, get her. Because obviously, well, I don't need to explain that unless you guys just weren't paying attention. Interesting was just the word of the day, okay? So in this next scene, Tommy actually goes to see young Jock and catch up with him because she hasn't seen him, I don't think, since... The altercation between her and Carly Red at Jock's party. Jock is at the damn hairdresser getting his press and curl or whatever the hell you want to call it because I don't even know what it is. The man's hair is permed and he's literally got a lady doing straightening it for him to get his Johnny Bravo on like oh my gosh I can't. It's so funny it's like within the last couple of years all these people all these women have gone au natural, okay? We've gone natural. Not weave, chat, because I've been natural since, like, high school. But, like, everybody's gone natural. And now the men are getting perms? Like, where is James Brown, right? Like, I'm so confused. Where is Little Richard? Like, these people are crazy. Like, why is Jock's hair permed right now? And he was trying to say... I remember at one point he said it was for a movie role. Or he's like, what if it was for a movie role? 
but it clearly it's not because the movie would have been recorded already Chad you just want your hair straight and like love yourself Tommy ends up apologizing to Jock about the whole situation for like using him and stuff and Jock was saying like the main thing that he's upset about is the fact that he never got to smash and Tommy said she was just getting ready to give him the kuntas I said boo what no we were rooting for you and I don't I honestly don't believe her I think she was just saying that to tease him she was not gonna give up the kuntas to this man I said no baby like what are you talking about right now? Nobody, no. I would have been so pissed if I read in a blog somewhere that these two had damn had sex. I would be pissed. Oh my gosh, no. Nonetheless, I think their relationship is is cute. I think that their friendship is cute. You know? Am I am I alone here? I feel like they're good friends. Like you know, they they have a cool relationship. So in this next scene, Estelita meets up with Stevie, or Stevie meets up with Estelita. And I noticed that her voice was nasally as hell. And I'm just like, uh-uh, baby. Her voice is so annoying. And she was trying to page Stevie about the fact that he lied about working with other Latin artists because Jocelyn is still present. She actually ended up telling him about the meeting she had with the other girls and that Carly Red is a water roach. I had never heard this term before. But I thought it was hilarious because what is a water roach? <laughs> but she literally called Carly Red a water roach and I was like, oh gosh. Stevie tells us and her that he doesn't really want her to hang around those girls because they are nothing but drama and mess. And I kind of agree, but this is love and hip hop Stevie. So, and if she's not your girl, you can't control who she hang around. And even if she was your girl, you can't control who she hangs around. So I wasn't sure why Stevie was doing the most, but he was just like, he just doesn't want her around that because those women are just messy. He ends up telling Estelita that even though Jocelyn is still very much a part of his label, he's not working with her. So she has all his undivided attention right now. At the end of the day, Estelita just wants to be drama free. She doesn't want any drama and she doesn't want any baby mama drama either. So that is her end goal. In this next scene, Rashida meets up with Kirk after not speaking for however long. Kirk was hilarious talking about no hug and I was just like, hug what? Like why are you expecting Miss Rashida to hug you right now? And when he said it, I was just like, this reminds me of high school when guys would say stupid crap like that. Just be like, so I can't go to a hug? Like, no, there's no hugging going on here. Like none. You stink. So I was like, this this man is hilarious, but he's asking for a hug. I was so mad. So then Rashida starts paging him and she's just like, look, I can't do a damn thing without at least one person throughout the day asking me about your ass, like what you're doing, if you're gonna do a paternity test, if we gonna get a divorce, like I can't do anything without somebody's without somebody bringing up your name and this whole situation and it sucks for me. Rashida verbatim said, I can't even post a picture on Instagram at this point without somebody asking about that situation. And he was like, that's not me, that's social media. I said, what? Come again? What are you talking about? It is all you, Kirk. Like, this is your fault. You think people would be having anything to ask her for, about if you weren't out here sticking your friggin' little ding dong and mother effing Jasmine over here and whatever other stripper bitch? Like, come on. I can't believe how much blame this man is not willing to take. Like, he's not trying to take any blame for anything. Like, he's so innocent. Like, he's just entitled to all of the innocence in the world. I don't understand. He's a dog. That's just what he is. Like, this is why Rashida needs to just divorce him and get it done with because I'm over him. She should be too. So, at this point, his delusional ass is trying to tell Rashida that at that time she wasn't really messing with him like that. And, and I'm just like, this is your wife. Like, if you feel as though she wasn't messing with you, she wasn't giving you nookie, then go to counseling figure something out but like why do you think she wouldn't be giving you that when you're out here swabbing her child's mouth for dna samples i wouldn't give you none either what are you talking about of course rashida's argument to this is you wasn't messing with me either and i'm just like i had enough of both of you guys like you guys are both dumb as hell i'm not here for it at all the only difference is that in this case 
Rashida did not step out on him and she made that very clear. She's like, even though you weren't, you know, we weren't doing this and we weren't doing that, I didn't step out on you, but you went out here, had a whole baby, or it seems as though you had a whole baby, and now everything is just chaos. So then once again, he is trying to say that from what he's heard, Jasmine does this for a living. This is how they make money. And I'm like, okay, if that was the case, then where are all these other babies? If she's doing this for a living, she wouldn't only have one child. Babe? So yeah, I was frustrated because I'm just like, why is this man playing victim talking about Jasmine does this for a living? Even if that is the case and she swindles men and she gets sugar daddies. Sugar daddy, and sure, she's a sugar baby. That is she could do for a living, but she ain't having babies here, there, and everywhere and claiming that they're from people that are well known. Like she's not doing that. This is her first kid. So we so we know well, I don't know if she got more kids, but I'm assuming this is her first child. And his name is written all over the baby. So the last time I checked, Kirk Frost had some type of physical relationship with this woman he then was paying her to keep hush hush and there's evidence of this and we've even seen pictures of him holding this baby so i don't know why he's trying to play victim at this point and all those things surfaced before the show came out so and then while the show was coming out more details would come out and of course there's still like hollabaloo about whether it's his or not because I don't know, VH1 wants us to keep guessing, but at the end of the day, it's embarrassing. And if this is really just for a storyline for Rashida and Kirk to collect a check, it's sad. So at this point, Rashida's fed up with the nonsense, and she was just like, look, go take a DNA test, and when you do, call me. And that's it. And that's how it should be. Let me know what the results are. We can go from there. Either way, the fact of the matter is that this man definitely was pork and homegirl. So there should be a divorce regardless. Like, how many times can you let your man cheat on you? How many times? You a grown woman. Let me know. I need to go eat my dinner, so I will finish recording this soon. Bye. So in this next scene, Jocelyn is wearing the most beautiful little kimono set, okay? There was a kimono... And then there was like a top and I think shorts. And it was just like, I need this. But I didn't bother to Google to see where the hell she got it from. Because it's probably expensive as hell knowing Jocelyn. But, or maybe it's from Fashion Nova. Who knows? But it was really, really cute. So she's talking to Stevie. And I think they're at Stevie's house. I can't remember whose house they're at. Stevie was asking her why she had to go on the reel and spill all that tea about Rashida and Kirk's relationship. And Jocelyn was basically defending it saying that she got all that information from the blogs it's not something that she just you know she knew and she shared it was already public information that she was sharing and blah 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 either way she should not have done that but i mean the world gonna find out anyway so so of course as usual stevie tried to talk business with jocelyn talk about getting this money but they just ended up flirting really really heavily like really heavily <laughs> I can't even explain it to you guys how they were flirting super intense and I was just like I just felt like after that scene they definitely went and did the damn thing because the way they were flirting I was just like oh okay um check please like I was so uncomfortable watching them flirt like that <laughs> so then Jocelyn moves in to say that she is moving to Miami and she's taking baby Bonnie with her and Stevie's not having or hearing any of it. Like, he's not here for it. He said, as long as he's in Atlanta, that's where his child will be. And he was very serious about this. He was just about as serious as Tip was with Tiny telling her that if she is going on the road, the baby is not going with her child. I was just like, this is not okay. Like, if, if the custody is joint... Jocelyn can't just uproot and go to Miami, I guess. But if she has sole custody or full custody of Bonnie, then she can do whatever the hell she wants. However, she should really appreciate the fact that Stevie wants to be active in his child's life. Like, at the end of the day, this is a little baby. And I think it's important for fathers to be active in their daughter's lives and their son's lives. So, good on Stevie for wanting to be a part of his child's life. For Jocelyn to just go to Miami... And like, say F you to Stevie is really not cool, in my opinion. 
Jocelyn also mentions the fact that she wants $20,000 a month in child support. I said, babe, <laughs> what? Like, what are you talking about? Tw what do you need $20,000 a month for? What? Are you buying Gucci diapers for your baby? Like, I don't understand which, per which person. And this is the problem with people or baby mamas that have baby daddies that have some substantial or a good income they do too much like what do you need twenty thousand dollars a month a month i'm not not twenty thousand dollars every four months twenty thousand dollars a month you don't even need ten thousand dollars a month like i was just so floored by her twenty thousand dollar a month request i was just like no i wouldn't say yes to that either like $20,000 a month in child support is robbery. Like, I was just like, no. No. It's cheaper to keep her for real. Like, if if they were still having a situation where they lived together, where they were cohabitating, they would not need child support to be a thing, you know? The dad would be there, the mom would be there, everything square. But Jocelyn's asking for 20 racks. I need to know what exactly and how exactly she, does, she plans to spend this money. Like... Your mortgage, if you have one, shouldn't be more than two $2,000, child. You know what I mean? Well, these people live in million-dollar homes, but, like, I don't know. I was just really shocked and flabbergasted by her $20,000 request. I said, no, that's the devil right there. And you know what the craziest part is? This is one baby. One baby does not need $20,000 a month. Like, what are you really going to do with this money? Like, when mothers do stuff like that, you know that the interest is not for the child. Like, it's not in the best interest of the child. She's just looking for a payday. So, which makes no sense to me because Jocelyn claims she has her own money. So, I don't understand why she would need $20,000 a month. I think it's disgusting. But that's none of my business. And I think... Bonnie Bella actually has Stevie's last name, and if that is the case, ain't no way in hell Miss Jocelyn Hernandez is going to Miami, and he made that very clear. Stevie actually got visibly upset in this scene, and he ends up getting up and walking away as he's telling her there will be no Miami. So, it is the last scene, and it is Carly Red's grand opening for her new store. Melissa is there with... Estelita and they go up to young jock and they're talking a little bit. Estelita's not a fan of Carly Red. She did call her she did call her a water roach and she is now saying that her store reminds her of the swap meet chat. We don't really have a swap meets here. I think I think a swap meet is the equivalent to a flea market, which is cheap shit. So Estelita was being mad shady, like she was not here for Carly Red's event at all. I don't know why she bothered to come. So then Dime pulls up with her man and she looks really good with her black hair. Like I'm just living for Dime with the black hair. Dime with the black hair is bae, like 100%. She looks really good. I think she puts on, like if she's going to be around her man, I think that's when she wears her black hair. Otherwise it's pink. But she looks really good with her black hair. She pulls up with her man. This is her first time taking him out of the house or going public with their relationship. And so everybody's kind of, like, not shocked, but like, I guess surprised to see that because their relationship was a secret. And last but not least, Miss Carly Red shows up with Caesar from Black Ink Crew. And she most definitely introduces him as her man. This is my man, Caesar. I said, the look on Caesar's face doesn't read to me like he is claiming Carly the way she's claiming him, but I don't know. They've been pictured a lot on social media, lots of videos together. She was on Black Ink Crew, so maybe they're together, maybe they're not, maybe it's just for VH1's purposes, but I don't think Caesar is jumping back into a committed relationship especially not with miss carly like come on now of all the women in the world he's not gonna jump in a relationship with carly red of all and if he does this is not going to last this is a fling it's sex if anything and that's just it is what it is but because young jock is there and carly red did invite jock and this is where the episode ended um it's going to be really messy on monday because she invited jock out of spite because she knew she was pulling up with Caesar, her man. So it's all messy, 
and I'm all here for it. I love you all, and I will definitely see you in the next one.